Hello and welcome to the Monday, January 9th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Last week we had a diary by Brad where he looked at some malware that took advantage of auto IT and uh, Brad as usual sort of looked at the entire infection chain from a network perspective basically what will you see in network traffic and then how to analyze it using tools like Wireshark. On Friday, uh, we had sort of a follow-up here from Xavier. Xavier looked at essentially the same malware, but now more from a reverse engineering perspective. So how are you actually figuring out what a particular auto IT malware does uh, by reverse analyzing it versus actually running it and seeing what it does on the network. Pretty interesting here, of course, one advantage of auto IT is that it is a scripting language. uh, So it's a text based when you download an auto IT executable, you basically get the script interpreter and then the script as an argument. This particular example that uh, Xavier looks at, it takes then advantage of a PowerShell, so runs uh, some uh, code in PowerShell. It also uses CertUtil uh, to uh, decode some base64 encoded uh, segment of the script. The script in the beginning has, well, what looks like a certificate, but it's not a real certificate. It's just base64 encoded uh, data that's then decoded using cert util. So a standard uh, living off the land attack for a Windows uh, malware. Need to really compare the two uh, diaries, the one by Brad, the one by Xavier, and see sort of uh, how they approach uh, analyzing this particular piece of malware with the network and then the reverse engineering lens. And Microsoft's Visual Studio Code has sort of become a very widely used IDE, an integrated development environment. Actually, according to some, the most widely used IDE around. And part probably also to popularity is not just that it's cross-platform, but also that there are a large set of extensions available to do things like, for example, make your code prettier by doing your indentations right and various integrations with other tools. Well, the problem with these extensions is that these extensions run with the privileges of the user running VS Code and they are also not in any way sandboxed. So pretty much uh, this extension can do whatever the user can do. And apparently the bad guys are starting to figure this out and are coming up with lookalike and uh, typo squatting extensions in order uh, to uh, trick users into installing the wrong extension, which then of course can perform malicious actions. There's a report by Aquasec looking into this in more detail. Sadly, this is a kind of a problem of all kinds of apps stores and the like, uh, but uh, apparently hasn't really gotten a lot of attention yet uh, in the visual uh, code world. And the one example uh, they're looking at here is an extension called Prettier, where uh, there is a lookalike extension that when you're looking just at the listing in the store, you can't really uh, tell them apart, but uh, the extension itself is spelled just with one T instead of a double T. And uh, then also there are a couple letters jumbled in the publisher's uh, company name. It is also pretty easy to become a verified publisher in the VS Code marketplace. All you need is a domain and verify that you own the domain. Doesn't mean that that domain is uh, trusted. It can be any domain that the particular publisher owns. The store does run an antivirus check, but we all know that antivirus checks are far from perfect. And once an extension is installed, it will update itself automatically from a GitHub repository. So at that point, it doesn't really hit uh, any part of the store and no uh, validation or any checks uh, would really work at that point. 
And security company Phylum uh, found a couple of interesting uh, malicious packages in PyPy. Uh, these Python packages distinguish themselves by using an interesting Cloudflare tunnel uh, for remote code execution. This is an existing uh, library they're actually uh, using here that uh, implements a full bidirectional tunnel via Cloudflare in order to allow remote control of an infected uh, system. Uh, interesting uh, because uh, we have so much traffic going to Cloudflare. It will be uh, quite tricky to distinguish uh, malicious from uh, non-malicious traffic and it's probably not going to raise any alerts unless uh, you have some real sensitive uh, triggers here. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.